That's why we walk by faith and not by sight. You're not supposed to see me. But every time you put out your leg, my hand gonna be under your leg. And looking in the physical, all they gonna see is you walking. But they're not gonna see me under the surface of the water with my hand under you. And every time you move, I'm moving. You see, it's not the way of the righteous man that's ordered. It's the steps of the righteous man that's ordered by God. Because every step, he gonna meet you along the way. Somebody shout if you're ready to believe God. Glory to God. Well, we're going to get up in this word. Saints of God, uh, just last week, amen, um, uh, uh, a white supremacist walked into a grocery store in Buffalo, New York, amen, and uh, opened fire, amen. And um, it was a black uh, community grocery store, amen, filled up with mostly people of color, amen, and um, he uh, took 10 lives. Amen. Ten lives in that grocery store and injured a bunch of people. Amen. He, uh, he was upset about what he calls the great replacement. Uh, uh, that great replacement is uh, something in that the white supremacist material are saying, they're saying is happening where colored people are replacing white folk in America. Amen. Uh, kind of like white folk replaced the Indians in North America. And they replaced the Aborigines in Australia. And they replaced uh, a lot of our people in Africa for the mineral resources there. But let's not digress. Let me continue to go. Amen. The young man said he was not only thinking about going to uh, black communities and black grocery stores, but also black schools and black churches. Any places where people of color would come to worship, be educated, or reside that were considered soft targets where people could not fight back. Amen. Um, these are troubled times that we are living in. Amen. Um, we are going to have to, number one, be vigilant as a church. Amen. Um, I know that when we first started security, amen, we didn't see the vision that God had given, but can anybody see the vision now? Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. And our security team has grown to over 40 members. It is strong. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. It is tremendously blessed, and we thank God for them. Amen. Just the presence, amen, of people watching. Amen. Whether the cameras that we have, uh, the men and the women, amen, who ban those security cameras and monitors, the men and the women that monitor our parking lot, amen, our foyer, amen, and all the places and the recesses of this church that y'all don't even know about, amen. We give God glory for the wolf pack, amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> glory to God. They don't go unnoticed, and we just have to, hallelujah, support them and encourage them when we see them, amen, and continue to pray for them, hallelujah, as they grow and be a viable ministry, amen. Um, we also, amen, have to be aware uh, as a church that, that tactics are changing when they're coming in. They're no longer coming in with handguns. They're coming in with body armor and also, amen, uh, assault rifles. And so um, as a leader of a church, amen, and being a pioneer, we are not only ready, amen, for them if they came in with handguns, but we are ready when they come in with body armor as well, amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. All you got to do is get the things that's going to go through the body armor, amen, or the things that's going to cause enough trouble to knock them down when it hit the body armor. And your church is ready for that, so give God some praise, amen, amen. Hallelujah. And so we just have to be vigilant, amen. Not that we want any trouble, amen. But when trouble sometimes come, amen, you got to be ready for them, amen. The second thing that we need to do is tell white supremacists, amen. And those that, that are on the fringes, amen, and, and have these philosophies, we just need to tell them that we are not the enemy, amen. We are not the enemy, amen. We are victims just like you to an outside enemy, amen. First, a spiritual one, but then a physical people who control the media and control the banks and are, are, are molesting and harassing us as a people just like they do in y'all. 
it, it, it's ridiculous, amen, for two people who are both getting beat up to fight each other instead of join forces and fight the real enemy that's trying to harm both of them. It is the enemy of my enemy that is my friend. And so let's not be foolish here. That time is falling, coming short, amen. Why not join forces, work together, amen, so that we can get their evil, amen, claws off of both of our peoples, amen. What you did, young man, is exactly what they want us to do, to fight each other, to kill each other, you know. Get your mind right, get your head in the game, all right. There's a better way to do this, amen. But it's going to take all of God's people joining as one. Amen. Under the name of Yahshua, who you would call Jesus the Christ. Come on, give y'all some praise up in here. We are not your enemy. And the third thing we're going to have to do is we're going to have to understand, amen, that as times progress closer and closer, amen, to our Lord's return. That the promise is not that things will get better, but that oftentimes things are going to get worse. And we are going to have to learn, amen, how to operate in troublesome times. Amen. We really are. And the text that we have before us, Yahshua is going to teach us, amen, how to deal with our troubled hearts during these type of times. Amen. And so we're going to cover three points uh, this morning. We're going to talk about trouble. We're going to talk about let not, and then we're going to talk about faith or believe. Amen. Faith or believe. That's how we're three points this morning, and with Yah's help, we should get through them. Amen. So that we can know how we ought to rule when we see these things happening. Amen. That these things are not taking God by surprise, so they shouldn't take us by surprise. Amen. We're going to have to, hallelujah, know how to conduct ourselves in these troublesome times. Let's begin with our first point this morning, trouble. Somebody say trouble. trouble. Amen. And we get this from verse 1 of chapter 14 of, God, uh, of, of, of John's gospel. It says, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, you believe in Yah, believe also in me. Saints of God, in the text before us, amen, remember, we've been covering chapters 12 and 13, and this is the night, the night right before Yahshua's death. And he's talking to his disciples. He's just celebrated the Passover with them, which we would call the, the Last Supper, amen. He's told them some, them some things about himself. He's told them some things about them, amen. And now he's telling them that more trouble is ahead. Trouble is coming. Hard times are on the way. Amen. Uh, it is amazing that our Lord focuses on the needs of his disciples right now. Amen. He wants to comfort them. But what we know Deacon Carl is that while he's trying to comfort them, Minister Duck, is that he is going through himself. All right. What is he going through? Listen, this is the night before the cross. This is the night that he's going to be betrayed. This is the night, amen, right before they spit in his face and whip his back and, 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 and stretch out his arms and, and, and put those nails in his wrists, amen. And it's not like he doesn't know it's going down. Nah, he knows all things, all right? But he is so much a shepherd that he's not even worried about himself. He's worried about them and their troubled hearts. He's ministering to them. Amen. Even though he knows that he's about to go to the cross. Amen. And he can see it on their faces. Huh? Because after he just read them, he told Peter, he said, Peter, you're going to deny me. One of y'all going to betray me. And I'm about to go back to the Father. I'm leaving. All right. And their faces just sunk. All right. They were on a wild roller coaster ride with Yahshua. They were just at the, the crest, the apex of his ministry, where he's entering in the city, riding on a, a coat, and they're putting out palm tree leaves, and they're saying, blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord, Baruch, Haba, Bashim, Yahweh. They, listen, this is the height of his ministry. They're thinking they're going to crown him king. He's going to be Messiah from Jerusalem forever, and they're going to sit at his right and his left, and they just experienced that. All right. And now they get in the secret place with Yahshua and Yahshua saying, I'm about to leave. 
They're about to sell me out. In fact, it's going to be one of y'all. And the one y'all think is the rock, the one that y'all think is the stronger, guess what? The strongest one, Peter, you're going to deny me. And you ain't going to deny me in front of a Roman soldier buff with a big chest. No, you're going to deny me to a little handmaid, a little girl with no authority, going to ask you whether you follow me or not, and you're going to say, no, I don't even know the man. Huh? He's reading them. And so he sees their face. They come in with a smile. He reads them. They go down. And their hearts are heavy. And that's when he talks about trouble. He says, let not your heart be troubled. You know what I'm saying? He's ministering to them. He's telling them, listen, I see on your face is rough, but hard times are, are coming even more. All right? Listen, he tells them, listen, I'm about to leave. He says, hallelujah, somebody's going to betray me, and Peter, you're going to deny me. Not to mention that after I leave, persecution going to start. They're going to chase y'all from house to house, city to city. They're going to do everything from ostracize y'all to persecute y'all, hang y'all on crosses upside down. Huh? Not only persecution, but this grand city, Jerusalem, is going to fall. Remember, I told y'all it was so. You thought that this temple was something? He said, listen, when they get finished with this city because y'all rejected y'all Messiah, it won't be one stone left upon another. Every wall is going to be torn down. Huh? He told them women that was crying for him on the way to the cross, don't cry for me. Cry for yourselves. You see? It's going to be persecution. It's going to be a fall of Jerusalem. It's going to be a, a trail of tears as we march from Jerusalem to Negro land on the Niger Valley River. Amen. There's going to be a great scattering happening. Troublesome times. Hebrews scattered on the four corners of the earth by ship going out to South America, North America, Europe. huh? Spread out, scattered. It's going to be some hard times, Brother Carl. And that's what Yahshua was preparing them for, huh? But it's not only hard times for us nationally, but you know that individually, we all go through hard times. Hallelujah. Anybody been through some hard times in here? Huh? You say, Pastor, been through, huh? I'm going through hard times, huh? And hard times will come individually, huh? In our personal walks, in our marriages, Raising our children. How many people go through hard times with their children? Huh? You see, I didn't ask about marriage because I already knew the answer to that. All right? We all go through. Huh? On our jobs, with our finances. Anybody hear me up in here? And I want to tell you, I want to encourage you, amen, that you right where you're supposed to be this morning. All right? You right where you're supposed to be. Sometimes we can go through trouble and feel like, hallelujah, we out the wheel, feel like we not where we supposed to be, feel like we got to be doing something wrong, feel like, hey, maybe I made a bad choice, amen. Let me, let me encourage you, amen. You right where God wants you this morning, amen. Because sometimes a little trouble is good for us, all right. But he says in John 16, 33, he told us, he says, listen, he says, these things I have spoken unto you that you might have peace. But this is the important thing. In the world, you will have tribulation. You will have trouble. While we are here, amen, trouble is a, a must. It's a necessity. It's going to happen. Huh? Offense is going to come. Trouble is going to come. Tribulation is going to come. But be a good cheer. I've overcome the world. Listen, you're going to overcome all the trouble. All right? That's the good news. You're going to overcome all the trouble if you hang on in that. If you don't let trouble overcome you, if you just keep on living, just keep on swimming, if you don't give up, if you don't try to hurt nobody and don't try to hurt yourself, listen, trouble will not overcome you because Jesus has overcome the world. Come on, give y'all some praise up in here. All right. But we got to be built God tough again, y'all. We too soft. We too weak. We get a little trouble, hallelujah. We looking at a, a, a bottle of pills. We looking at a gun on the shelf. Nah, trouble is what it's supposed to be. But we got to walk through that trouble and we going to learn how this morning. Come on, give y'all some praise. All right. And that's what Job was saying in Job 14.1. He told us, he said, man that is born of a woman, which is every man, 
Man that is born of a woman is of a few days. Huh? A few days. We don't live very long. Huh? Time flies. Huh, Mr. Broussard? Huh, Miss Lou? Times fly, deaconess. Listen, because it's flying for me. I'm looking at y'all children. I'm like, Lord, I thought they was just six. <laughs> children grown, children driving, pull up to my house driving. Baby, how old are you? Listen, man that is born of a woman is of a few days. And what? guess what else? It's not only a few days, but it's a few days that's what? Full of trouble. You know that every day has its portion of trouble? Every day has its portion of trouble. And you waking up like trouble not going to happen. No, every day you wake up, there's a portion of trouble that's, hallelujah, been, been given, assigned to you. Do you understand the assignment this morning? Anybody hear me up in here? Huh? The Bible says, I never even gave it to you, but I believe it's in Matthew, Matthew 6 and 34. And if you can give me that in an NIV, Brent, that'll be great. That'll be great. That's every day we assign a portion of trouble. So don't you wake up and just be like, oh, it's going to be a trouble-free day. No, you're going to have some trouble. But it's how you respond to that trouble. How you going to respond to that trouble. All right? All right? Look what it says in, in Matthew 6. And this is Yahshua talking. He says, therefore, do not worry about tomorrow. See, some of y'all focus on tomorrow. He said, don't you dare worry about tomorrow. Why not worry about tomorrow? The King James says, for tom or the NIV says, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble on its own. Every single day has a portion of trouble that's assigned to us. You come in here waking up like no trouble coming your way. Huh? And because of that, it makes you soft. Because of that, it makes you fickle. Because of that, you can't take what's coming to you. Because of that, you can't stand the rain like New, New, uh, New Edition said. All right? No, no, no. Storms will come. Anybody hear me up in here? Storms will come. And every day they come. All right? But being a big boy and a big girl in the faith is that when the trouble comes, amen, we know how to let not our hearts be troubled. Come on, give y'all some praise up in here. Job 5, 7, it tells us, yet man is born unto trouble. It's almost like it's the reason he put us here. Be why? Because we live in a fallen world. We live in a fallen world. How are you going to be in a fallen world and not have some trouble? How the devil is going to be loose in this fallen world and you not have some trouble? How in the world, hallelujah, you're going to be living in a fallen fleshly body and not have no trouble? How in the world, huh, you're going to be in a fallen world with a fallen angel in a fallen body living in a world system run by a fallen people and not have a little bit of trouble? No, no, in this world you will have trouble. But how will you respond to that trouble? Come on, give y'all some praise up in this house. So hard times and storms going to come, y'all. We're going to have defeats. We will have failures. We will have setbacks. We're going to suffer rejection, betrayal. All of this is part of the plan while we are here on this side of Jordan. And we're going to pick up all these things and have to go through all these things on our journey. Now, our journeys are all different. Some are going to pick up these hard times in the very beginning of their journey. As children, huh? being rejected, not being claimed by parents, growing up in some tough circumstances and tough situations, being abused and misused, huh? molested and rejected. huh? And some people are going to pick up that on the front end. Their life is heavy with trouble on the front end. You understand what I'm saying? And let me tell you something good about that. Hallelujah. That's your portion, huh? And sometimes it's heavy on the front end, but trouble don't last always. Anybody hear me up in here? Just hold on and keep living. Hallelujah. And your portion of trouble is going to decrease as you go on. Huh? Huh? Yeah, so we got the front end trouble loaders, huh? But then we got some, hey, God, you was raised great. Your home life was great. You grew up in the, hallelujah, proverbial two-parent home. Ain't too much going on. 
mom and daddy was there, amen, I would say it like the Huxtables, but some things didn't happen, but let's just say it was just like the Huxtables in a perfect environment, you know? So hallelujah, mom and dad was there, everything looks great, you was popular in high school, ain't nobody picked on you, but listen, let me tell you, it might have been easy on the front end, but maybe trouble don't hit you on the back end. Anybody hear me up in here? But people began to pass away and die off. And people began to betray you in marriage and, and hurt you and, and you raising them in children. Pastor, what you're saying, hallelujah, we all have different journeys, y'all. But in those different journeys, on those different journeys, huh? we all have our portion of trouble. Come on, give y'all some praise up in here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, now, as we go through trouble, huh? Hallelujah. We got to watch not to let that trouble hold us down and hold us back. We got to learn how to deal with that trouble and how to keep swimming, how to keep running, how to keep living for God. Huh? One commentator spoke of the whales that migrate from Alaska to Mexico, or some of them go from Alaska to cold waters uh, 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 to Hawaii. I got a little map and some pictures for you. Hallelujah, that sound boot can, can pull up. Amen. Hallelujah, the wells will feed in the cold waters and come down to the warm waters to reproduce. Amen. And they do that every season. They do that every season. Huh? But while they in the deep depths of the Alaskan, amen, cold water, amen, the whales pick up barnacles. They pick up barnacles. Pastor, what's barnacles? Barnacles are like little crustaceans, amen, almost like little, little, little uh, 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 lobsters and, and, and shrimp and, and, and shells. They, they, they attach themselves uh, uh, to the whales, and they attach themselves to everything, really. You'll see them on the bottom of ships or on the sides of the, the rigs offshore. And these are actually living beings. They attach themselves to, to substances, to surfaces, and they have a little living thing on the inside of them that eats the plankton and the microscopic sea life. Hallelujah. Uh, uh, now, they look small when we look at the whales. Huh? But they actually, the size of a man's hand or the size of a coffee cup, that's a, that's a barnacle. And while the whales are swimming and feeding and eating in the Alaskan waters, the barnacles begin to kind of grow on them, amen, as they move around, all right? The problem is, is that the barnacles, when they grow on whales, they're just not on the, the, tarsal, the dorsal fin. they just not, they all over the whales. In a lot of pictures that you see of whales, you're like, ooh, that's an that's a ugly creature, huh? No, you just see the barnacles. That's just the barnacles. And you'll see them, and they got stuff all over their eyes. They got stuff all over their mouth. They look a little bumpy, huh? And you're like, man, a whale is not a beautiful creature. No, God made them beautiful. It's just the barnacles. It's just the barnacles. Because as they go through life, barnacles grow on them. And it hinders them. In fact, barnacles, they, they, they have been known to grow on our submarines. And when the submarines get a lot of barnacles on them, they don't even move fast no more. Because it stops the flow of water while, while something is trying to move. Just like the wells, it stops them from being able to move. It could even stop them from being able to breathe. They'll grow around the eyes and stop them from being able to see. But right when they on their way back to the warm waters to reproduce on the coast of California, the whales, huh? Some say that they know how to get rid of the barnacles. They rub up against, hallelujah, the rocks on the California coast. They rub up against each other. They spend a lot of time above the water because the barnacles can't survive but being in the water. The whales know how to get rid of the barnacles. Or anybody hear me up in here, all right? As we go through life, just like these wells, we pick up barnacles. And the barnacles come from the troubles. They come from the hard times. They come from the difficulties, the defeats. They come from the rejection. And if we don't know how to get rid of the barnacles, huh? 
By the time we 50 and 60 years old, you can't even see us no more. All you see is the struggle we done been through. All you see is the defeat that we done been through. And when people look at us, when God made us beautiful, when God made us joyous, when God made us loving, when God made us peaceful, amen, when people look at us, they don't see peace. They don't see joy. They don't see love. All they see is the barnacles that we done been through. Anybody hear me up in here? All they see is the trouble. You see, it's the barnacles, amen. And what you don't know about barnacles is, is that they sharp. And so anytime somebody would try to take off a barnacle from a well and their hands, the one trying to help the well could get cut. That's how you are in your life. You not only have barnacles because of all you've been through coming up, huh? but the barnacles are sharp. And even when others try to help you, amen, they can wind up hurting themselves trying to help you get through the bruises of the barnacles from the hard times you done been through. Come on, give y'all some praise up in here. Huh? Come on, look at your neighbor and say, it's time for me to get rid of my barnacles. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Isn't that something? The wells, before they go to reproduce, have to get rid of the barnacles. Here you are in your life, and you want to reproduce. You want to give birth. You want God to bless the world through you with businesses, with inventions, huh? With something that you could give birth to in the earth. But before you give birth, you got to make the trek to get rid of the barnacles. Come on, give y'all some praise. All right? Listen to me. Because while troubles and setbacks and defeats are prescribed by God, when we enter into this world, they were never meant to hold you down. They were never meant to stop you from swimming, from moving, from serving God. All right? These troubles, if taken correctly, huh? are meant to strengthen you and to bless you and to prepare you, amen, not only for the, the, the things that he has for you in the future, but to prepare you for the future life that he has for us. But if we don't handle them right, these troubles can hinder us. Come on, give God some praise up in here. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look at your neighbor and say, you have too many barnacles on you. All right. Point number two. Point number two. Let's talk about let not. Let not. All right. So Jesus tells them with all the trouble that's coming, all the things that they're going to go through. He says, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. So Jesus says, in spite of all these troubles, disciples, let not your heart be troubled. Focus on the two words at the beginning, let not, let not, huh? In the midst of our troubles and difficulties, Jesus says we are to let not, huh? We are to not allow our hearts to be troubled. What does that mean? Recognize that when our hearts are troubled, we have a part to play. We have a part to play. We are troubled when we allow trouble to trouble us. That's why he said, let not. He's saying that you have a choice in the matter. You have a role in the matter. All of us going to go through hard times, but we have a choice whether the hard times is going to trouble us and mess us up. Anybody hear me up in here? Every well gets barnacles on, but only the lazy ones keep the barnacles on. You can get the barnacles off. You can go through trouble and not let trouble trouble you. He says, let not, let not. It's our choice. huh? But what else he says? He says, let not your heart. Let's talk about that. huh? Because there's a certain portion of ourselves that Yahshua don't want to be troubled. He said, let not your what? Your heart be troubled. huh? Pastor, is he talking about our physical heart? 
the one we got to go to the doctor for and make sure we got good blood flow and, and make sure, hallelujah, that, that, that hallelujah, uh, we, we don't have uh, a blockage. No, he's not talking about that heart. He's not talking about that heart. When he says heart, he's talking about a spiritual thing. He's talking about the inner you. He's talking about your soul. He means let not your soul be troubled. Huh? Pastor, what's my soul, the real you? Because the body is not the real you. No, that ain't the real you. Uh-uh. That's just the house that encases the real you. Huh? Huh? But what he don't want to be troubled is the real you. Your soul. The core of who you are. It represents your mind, your will, your emotions, your intellect. Long after this body is gone, your soul is still going to be living. And Yahweh say, don't let this trouble, trouble your heart, your soul. Huh? Why? Huh? Because if your soul is troubled, your mind is troubled. If, you, if your soul is troubled, your emotions are troubled. And you're going to let some past things trouble your mind 20 years later. You're still troubled. You don't let some past things trouble, hallelujah, your emotions. And that's why you're not emotional stable, huh? Because of some barnacles, some trouble in the past. But some of y'all not even just troubled mentally and emotionally by past trouble. Some of y'all troubled, hallelujah, mentally and emotionally about some present trouble. Some things that's going on right now. When he says, let not your heart be troubled. He's not just talking about back then. He's talking about past Present and what? And future trouble. Don't let your heart be troubled about what happened, what's going on, and even what's coming. Don't be troubled. Don't be troubled. Huh? Huh? Now, he says, hallelujah, let not your heart be troubled. Now, now we know the heart, y'all. All right? And that's why the Bible says, Brent, I don't know if I gave it to you, in Proverbs 4.23, look what he tells us. He says, keep thy heart. Keep that heart, your soul. What does that keep mean? To guard it. You see that picture, that heart that's encased within a finely mesh cage? That's how our heart's supposed to be. Guard it. We're supposed to guard it. He said, keep that heart. Huh? Back to the scripture, Brent. He says, keep that heart with all diligence. That means that every day you wake up, you got to ask yourself, how can I protect my heart? How can I protect the inner me? Because if I let something hurt the inner me, mm, it's going to mess up the rest of my life. Anybody hear me up in here? How can I protect the inner me? How can I protect my soul? He says, keep thy heart with all diligence. Why? For out of it huh, are the issues of life. Meaning that when we live, we live from our heart. And if you have a wounded heart, whoo, you're going to have a wounded life. <laughs> Anybody hear me up in here? Huh? So he says, listen, you got to learn how to protect that heart, how to guard it, how to keep it. That no matter what you go through, huh? you might be bruised and battered on the outside. But on the inside, listen, you as pure as gold, you as, hallelujah, as protected, amen, hallelujah. Your body might leave with a limp, but your heart is feeling as good as it was the day you met him. Anybody hear me up in here? He said, keep thy heart with all diligence. Come on, go ahead and show me the other pic of how life wants to beat up our heart because life shoots arrows at our hearts, y'all. Huh? All of us. Troubles. Huh? People messing with us, huh? You got to learn how to not let it get to you. Look at your neighbor and say, don't let it get to you. You see? That's why Jesus could say, let not your heart. We up in here with our heart wide open to everything that's happening. Everything that people tell us, everything that people do to us, every time they betray us and stab us in the back, we got our, the doors of our heart wide open. Is never guarded. Is never guarded. And because of that, we wounded. Because of that, we messed up. Because of that, hallelujah, we can't have no more friends. Because of that, we can't love nobody else. 
Because of that, we, some of y'all can't even go to church. That's why y'all live streaming. Because of that, hallelujah, y'all just messed up. Because of the troubles. Because of the troubles. Because of the troubles. You didn't guard your heart. Now, I'm going to give you another illustration. He said, guard it because out of it, show me the next picture, flows the issues of life. What you see, what you say, what you do, what you hear, what people do to you. They all flow inside your heart, and then out of your heart, everything you do flows from it. You understand what I'm saying? All right? Your heart is like a river. Your soul is like a river. But you got to watch what's going into your river upstream. Woo! You see, the outflow of your life is dirty because you're letting everything dirty into it. You're letting all of the hurt into it. You're letting all of the problems into it. You're not guarding your heart. He says, let not your heart be troubled. The only way not to be troubled is to not let trouble get into the heart. Woo! Woo! He says, let not. Let not. So, Pastor, how is it possible to let not my heart be troubled when all this trouble is happening all around? When nationally, they're looking to kill my people. They're running into grocery stores. They're staking out churches. They're looking at our schools with our little children running around. Pastor, how? When they're still shooting us in the street. How? When it's not just cops no more, but everyday uh, Caucasians looking to, to kill black folk now. You see? You see? And how do I not let this trouble happen when all these problems, not just nationally, but my personal problems? Me and my husband not getting along. Me and my wife bumping heads. Huh? My children out of control, Pastor. Pastor, bills don't stop coming. I know everybody graduating, but I'm, I'm broke. And they all asking for something. They all, they all want graduation gift. I got a gift for you. Congratulations. That's what some of y'all want to say. Your graduation ain't stop the bill from coming in. The LUS don't care about no graduation. You graduate in the dark. So you going through some things on your own, huh? Marital, family, children, huh? Even in your body as you get older, trouble, aches and pains, trouble, blood pressure, trouble. You see? How can I allow all this to be going on around me and not let it get to my heart? Jesus gives us the answer. He says, you got to believe. Ooh, he says, you got to believe. Go back to the verse in 14. Hallelujah. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. Third point of the morning, faith. Faith. How do I go through all of this? And not let it destroy my heart, destroy my soul, destroy who I am. You was a happier person. You was a more optimistic person. You was a better person to be around. If they would have met you 10 years ago, they would have married you. I ain't talking about nobody in particular. I'm just letting the spirit lead me. Huh? What has happened to you? Trouble. You would have made a, a great pastor. You would have made a, a great minister, a great deacon. What has happened to you? Trouble. You would have been a great member of this church. You would have been building up, out there witnessing, out there filling up the church. You would have been teaching on this platform. You would have been teaching in the Sunday school. What has happened to you? Trouble. You don't let that trouble get to your heart. Pastor, how can I get the barnacles off me this morning? How can I make the journey, huh? And not let these things deform me. Not let them be on my skin that make me sharp and not let want other people to be around me. 
huh? He gives us our answer. He said, you got to believe. You got to believe. Faith is the answer on how we guard our heart this morning. Come on, give y'all some praise up in here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You might as well envision that that cage around that heart is fate this morning. And it's going to protect your heart. It's going to protect your heart. It's going to protect your heart. Listen, I'm going a little bit off the nose, but sometimes you got to just follow the spirit. Amen. You see, faith is a protector. That's why when we talk about the armor of God, huh? faith is called the what? The shield of faith. Because you're going to get behind faith. You see, when I told some of y'all that faith was the way to protect your heart, you look at me, oh, goodness, can you get to something more concrete? There's nothing more concrete than your faith. There's nothing more concrete than your faith. Your faith can move mountains. Your faith can split seas. And your faith can protect you and keep you in the midst of the storm. Show them what the shield of faith look like. Show them what it looked like, sound boot. You got to get behind your faith. Because as troubles come, which they will come, in this world we will have trouble. You got to have something to hold on to, to stand behind, to get behind. That no matter what you go through, no matter what happens, hallelujah, it's not going to break you, it's only going to make you. You see? You see? It's called a shield of faith. Yeah, trouble going to come. Huh? But does that trouble have something that you can pull up and let that trouble run into? You see, that's faith. And that's why Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled. Believe. Believe. Because if you believe, you're going to be protected in these troubles sometimes. If you believe. If you believe. Listen, that was the prayer that he told Peter. Huh? He said, Peter, what was that in Luke, huh? Luke 22? He said, Peter, the devil, Satan, desires to sift you like wheat. Huh? Huh? And trouble was coming. And look, 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 watch the, watch the revelation of this prayer. Jesus could have stopped Satan from trying to sift him. But he didn't. He didn't pray that the devil wouldn't try him. Hey! He didn't pray that the trouble wouldn't come. He prayed a different direction because sometimes we need trouble. Woo! It's in the fires of affliction that gold is made, that silver is tried. The trouble you're complaining about this morning is going to make you the man or the woman you've been praying to be. You see? And so Jesus never said, hallelujah, no, 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 don't try him. Jesus probably pull a, pull a job on him. Have you considered my servant? Yeah, go ahead and try him. Go ahead and try him. But while you're trying him, Yahshua said, but I have prayed for thee. Woo! No, go ahead and try him. Go ahead and let the trouble come. Go ahead and try him. Let the trouble. But I have prayed for thee. That what? That thy faith fell not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The devil think he's slick by allowing some things in your life. <laughs> but you don't know my God. My God knows what I need, when I need it, and the trouble may come. Woo! But if my faith fail not, if my belief fail not, oh, I'm going to get through everything the devil throw at me. And some of y'all may feel that way. He throwing at you the bed, the couch. The kitchen sink, he's throwing everything at you right now. But listen, like Yahshua say, and now your pastor is standing in agreement with Yahshua. We have prayed for thee. We have prayed for thee. Yahshua make an intercession for thee. And what kind of intercession he making? That thy faith fail not. How do I guard my heart? How do I protect my heart? How do I go through all of this trouble and come out clean? How do I walk through the fires like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and come out not even smelling the smoke, 
How can I let them stab me in the back? How can I let them talk about me? How can I let the family, hey God, seem like it's falling apart? How can the money, hey God, never seem to be reaching the, the bills that they're going to? How can I still have a smile on my face? Because I believe. Because I believe. Because I believe. He said, Peter, I, I prayed for thee that thy faith, that shield, that protective hedge around your heart, that your faith fell not. And that faith is so strong when you have it. It's not only going to protect you, huh? but faith is contagious. When you have it, it's going to influence and affect the people around you. So he tells Peter once you're converted, huh? And what he means by that in the New King James, it says once you've returned, because the trouble going to shake you a little bit. It's going to hit you and you're going to wobble. But that faith going to catch your head. You're going to shake it off and say, hold on, hold on. I still remember. I still believe. And he said, once you return them to me, he said, what? Do what? Strengthen the others. Recover the others. When you are protected by faith, it's not only going to do you good, but you're going to be able to pick up other people that's been knocked down around you. You're going to pick up that husband, pick up that wife, pick up them children, pick up the boss on the job, pick up that minister, pick up that deacon, pick up even your pastor because your faith. Hey, because your faith, it fell not. That's how strong that faith is. And that's what we use to guard our hearts as we walk through. We never let go of the core beliefs that we have. You see, our faith, our faith, our faith. And I'm going to tell you that faith has three elements. And I used to teach this long, long ago, amen, when we was a Bible study off of Moss Street. And I used to teach it at Pine Street as well. And, and Minister Ann probably was one of the last ones who taught it, amen, over here. But, but faith has three elements. Faith, faith, faith is about knowledge, what you know. Faith is about agreement, what you agree to. Faith is, is all about trust. Huh? What you're trusting in. And those three different elements make faith. All right. To really believe in something, you got to know something. You can't believe in something you don't know. If I went to somebody who didn't know the promises of God, I would tell them, listen, don't you know? You the head and not the tail. And they'll tell you, I never heard that before. Don't you know he's a healer? Don't you know he's a provider? Don't you know he's a way maker? But you can't believe in something that you don't know. Anybody hear me up in here? This is why it's important to get in the word of God. This is why our God says faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Because you can't believe something you ain't heard. You can't believe in something you don't know. So when we say faith, you got to know some things. Faith is not only about knowledge, which is the Latin word notitia, but faith is all about agreement. You can't just know he's a healer. You got to agree that he's a healer. You can't just know he's a provider. Because listen, you can know something in your mind, but not agree with it and believe it in your heart. When you really believe and have faith in something, you not only know the information, but you agree with the information. You say, yes, God is good. Yes, he's a provider. Yes, he's a healer. Less, yes, he's a protector. And faith knows, faith agrees, and then faith trusts. Faith trusts. That's fiducia. Fiducia in the Latin. It means that you trust what God says. You trust it. Because some people know it, but don't trust it. Some people agree with it, but don't trust it. They say God is a provider, but they're looking for everybody else to provide but God. Huh? They say God is a healer, but they're looking for everybody else to heal but God. You see, when you believe, you not only know and agree, but you trust and you rely on God. You know, they have something called a trust fall. 
when they tell you hallelujah to stand up and somebody going to be behind you. And they say just fall. Now some of, some of y'all saw me catch me a uh the weekend that passed. That was a trust fall. She didn't even see me back there. She just, she just was going down. And, and hallelujah, somebody in church said, Pastor, that was a trust fall. And that continued to resonate in my spirit. That's how we fall in the hands of God. That's how we fall on the promises of God. God, I can't see you. God, I don't even know if you're back there, but I know that you said you would be back there. And I know that you said that you would catch me. I know that you said you would provide. And so I'm just going to fall back in trust that you're going to meet me. I'm going to rely upon you. Hallelujah. And nothing else. Because that trust fall. Listen, you ain't got nothing catching you. The trust fall is this. If you don't catch me, I'm going to hit the ground. Genuine faith tells that to God. If you don't catch me, somebody hit me up in here, I'm going to hit the ground. If you don't provide, I'm going to hit the ground. If you don't heal, I'm going to hit the ground. If you don't make a way, I'm going to hit the ground. That's what true faith looks like. And everybody that walk in faith, if you don't catch me, I'm going to sink. Because this water can't hold me. But I know that if you're with me, I'm going to walk on it. That's fiducia. That's trust in God. And most believers don't ever get to that place. Where you just solely relying on God. You see, this walk with God and those that walk in faith, listen, you jumping out of plane with God. And God is the parachute. Some of us black folk, we don't jump out of planes. We might jump off the porch. You might catch a few of us jumping out, jumping off the house. But what we don't do, we don't jump out of planes. Well, I'm telling you, a new season is coming in your life. Anybody hear me up in here? It's a season of jumping out of planes in the spirit. But I won't tell you in the spirit that God is our parachute. And the person that jump out of a plane, they trust in the parachute that's on their back. If, if, if the parachute don't catch them, what's going to happen? They going to hit the ground. Listen to me. There's some things in your life that God want to do for you. Huh? But you're not trusting in the parachute. You're not relying on God. You're not trusting in him. There's plenty of things, y'all, that, hallelujah, you're going to encounter in life that the calculations don't add up. That, that, that general and, and, and common wisdom would tell you never to do. But there's a still small voice in your heart saying, I got you. Ooh. I'm with you. Huh? And you have a word. You know the word. Huh? He going he gonna to grant you all of his riches according to Christ Jesus. If he's provided for the birds of the airs and the lizards of the valley, surely he's going to provide for you. Healing is the children's bread. Great peace have they that love my law. Nothing shall be impossible for those who believe. Huh? He said, hallelujah, those that, that believe in me and trust me, they're going to do great exploits. Huh? He tells you, you're the lender and not the borrower, the head and not the tail. So you, have, you know these things, then you got to agree with these things. Yes, God, your word is true. And then you got to trust him. You got to walk out when he's telling you to walk out. And God is going to meet you. And in the spirit, sometimes you ain't going to see him. Huh? You look in the head, well, God, I don't see you. I don't see you. God said, you're not supposed to see me. That's why we walk by feet and not by sight. You're not supposed to see me. But every time you put out your leg, my hand going to be under your leg. And looking in the physical, all they're going to see is you walking. But they're not going to see me under the surface of the water with my hand under you. And every time you move, I'm moving. You see, it's not the way of the righteous man that's ordered. It's the steps of the righteous man that's ordered by God. Because every step, he going to meet you along the way. Somebody shout if you're ready to believe God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's faith. That's faith. That's belief. 
a knowledge, an agreement, and a trust, and a trust. And it is that faith that guards our heart. That no matter what comes your way, you know what God done said. No matter what trouble surrounds you, you agree with the word of God. No matter what difficulties, amen, assault you, amen, you trust. Huh? You trust. That's what David said. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. He said, though a host should encamp about me, even in this will I be confident, David says. It doesn't matter how it looks. It doesn't matter how it sounds. It doesn't matter how it feels. My heart had found a resting place. It's protected. It's protected. It's protected. It's protected. And I want to tell y'all something else. I'm, I'm off my nose. I'm just flowing from my heart. Listen, I want to tell y'all something else. People that's filled with faith are usually optimistic. What you mean? They look at the glass half full and not half empty. You see, a faith-filled person can't be pessimistic. They can't be negative. They don't look at a situation and say, we're going to crash and burn and be electrocuted on that fence, and then somebody going to come and decapitate us, and then a dog going to eat our ankles. They don't look at that. Some of y'all, <laughs> and y'all saying that getting on the plane. That's how y'all, y'all done reviewed the whole thing, the crashing, burning, dogs eating your ankles, and you see the funeral. You see, that's a person that's got a faith problem. You see, you see, you see, faith-filled people are optimistic. They can't be pessimistic because they believe. They believe. They trust God. They trust that all things will work together for the good of those that love God and those are called according to his pur purpose. When you be a negative person, that's a person that has a faith problem. And you trying to fix their negativity, amen, by, by telling them, stop being so negative. No, give them the word of God. Give them something to believe. Because listen, faith dispels negativity. And negativity dispels faith. The two can't work together. They like oil and water. That's why optimistic and pessimistic people, though oftentimes they get mad, but they always bump heads. <laughs> They get married because opposites attract, but they bump heads because while you optimistic trying to stand in faith, the pessimistic person is trying to suck the faith out the room. <laughs> we all going to drown up in here. You know that. <laughs> My baby, a glass of water just spilled in the, on the table. Yeah, but you don't know how H2O work up in here. That thing will multiply, boy, I tell you. We drown. They drown. They, 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 yeah, they drown. They'll drown, they'll drown you with an eyedropper. Just, if you're upside down in your nose, they'll drown you. <laughs> Anybody hear me up in here? We work on our negativity by filling our lives with the knowledge of God's word, agreeing with that word, and trusting with that word. You see, we trust in it. We trust in it. And that faith is going to protect your heart. Optimistic people walk through life and they go through rain and they go through trouble. And that rain sheds off of them like water off a duck's back. Why? Because they believe. Pessimistic and negative people go through and they, they, they fall through life. They stumble through life. And even when good things are about to happen, they say, yeah, but we know. We know. Something going to catch on fire. There's always fire. There's always, you watch that movie, Fire Starter, too much when you was young. You see? You see, somebody say, God, God increase, my faith increase my faith so I can guard my heart, so guard my heart. in Jesus' name. In Jesus. Come on, give him some praise up in this place. <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah. And so faith is the way to protect that heart. Now let's get in particular, all right? Because let me tell you something. We all have faith, all right? Uh, uh, but we have faith in different things. 
all right? Uh, 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 there's not a person on the earth that does not have faith, all right? It just that oftentimes our faith is uh, pointed and aimed inaccurately, all right? And so we, we have faith. We have faith in ourselves. We have faith in, in one another. We have faith in, in our husband or faith in our wife. We have, we have faith and we believe in our children and we believe in our church and we believe in our pastor and our ministers and our deacons and, and some believe a God and, and I don't know, they football team or, or they baseball team or, or they basketball team. And so, and so we believe and, 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 and we believe it in all these things, all right? Now I just want to bust your bubble for a second, all right? You shouldn't have faith in none of those things that I just mentioned. None of those things. None of those things. And, 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 and I mean like, you know, you know, you can be happy for them and you can, you can have a degree of, of trust, but the faith right here that will keep you out of trouble is not that faith. It's not that faith in other people. It's not that faith in other things. It's not that faith because people let us down. All right? All right? And people that's been wounded, huh? Huh? Your faith has been found in erroneous things. In our text before us, Jesus tells us not only the, the solution is to believe, but he tells us what to believe in. He says, let not your heart be troubled. He says, believe. But believe in what? Believe in God. That's the resting place of your faith. That's, that's the place where if you believe in him, you're going to be all right no matter what come your way. No matter what happens. Listen, because there's a lot of trouble that's out there. And I can't stand up here and guarantee that something's not going to hit you. I, guarantee, I can't guarantee you're not going to experience death around you. I can't guarantee no matter how good of a Christian you are that you're not going to experience divorce. I can't guarantee that no matter how much, how matter, how matter, no matter how much good a Christian you are, you're not gonna get sick. I can't guarantee that. But what I can guarantee that if your faith is in God, the troubles might come, but you're gonna get through every trouble that come your way. That is what I can guarantee. Because we've placed our faith in erroneous things, you've aimed it inaccurately. And all I'm here to do is to touch your arrow, to touch your bow, and to just move it to the target where you should have it at. That's my job this morning. That's my job this morning. You know, you don't, you don't know how many people, you know, that have been hurt. That's why some people are not in church this morning. Their faith was in a man, in an institution, and not in the God of that institution. You know? Then they want to blame you. Don't blame him. Baby, I never told you to believe in God. We ain't never come here to be believers in Omar. Come on. Real talk. We've come here to be what? Believers of God. Anybody hear me up in here? Not believers of First Lady. And for sure not Minister Phil. And <laughs> men, believers in Minister Ed. And Deacon this one and Deacon now. No. Believe in God. And what happens is, if any of the aforementioned people rub you the wrong way, guess what? You come up in here and your heart is unscathed. You ain't hurt. You, you, you're not even let down. You know? Excuse me. I'm looking for Jesus. Ooh. So he tells us where we put our faith at. He says, A, believe in God. All right, quickly, quickly, quickly. And these are for those that's new to the faith. We believe in God. This is how we protect our hearts. We believe in, number one, the existence of God. Those that believe that there is a God can go through trouble better than those who don't. The atheists have no one to look up to. When trouble hit, they have no one to explain it. And so they go through and, and they, they hurt a God, they want to take their lives. They want to be suicidal. No, when you believe in the existence of God, you know that there's a sovereign, omnipotent, omnipresent, 
omniscient, benevolent, loving God that's governing the affairs of this earth. And though we may not understand it, his ways are higher than our ways and his thoughts are higher than our thoughts. Amen. And we trust in that. We believe in that. When you believe in the existence of God, you'll be able to get through tough times when they come. Come on, give y'all some praise up in this place. Hebrews 11, 6 tells us, and it's one of our core scriptures that we've been on, but without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, that he exists, that he's alive, that he's there with us, God. Even in the hard times, even when we weeping, even when nobody else is there, I am with you. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. And that makes you deal with trouble a little bit different than the rest of the people who don't believe in him. Come on, give him praise up in here. We believe in the existence of God. How else do I believe in God? We believe in his promises. Every word that he's told us in this book, all right? And that's why it's important to read it every day. And for those who struggle, amen, with literacy, amen, I remember talking to a brother as he was learning and getting himself ready to read. Guess what? He would put on an old tape and listen to that word of God. You see? Faith coming by hearing. That's whether you're reading it yourself or somebody else reading to you. Anybody hear me up in here? It come by hearing. And so... If you're not even that good reading all of that, huh? Get that Bible app on your phone. If you got a flip phone, get you the CDs. If you don't have a CD player, get your old tape cassette. If you don't have an old cassette, get your uh, A track. If you don't have an A track, baby, I can't do nothing for you up here. I just, you, know. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But those promises are gonna build you up. Why? Because you believe in his existence. And then you go deeper and you believe that he's made some concessions and some promises directly unto you. The Bible says in Romans, Romans 4.20, it talks about Abraham. And it says that Abraham staggered not at the promise of God. He didn't stagger. He didn't falter. He didn't doubt it. God said it. He believed it. And that settled it. A lot of us are staggering at the promise. He didn't stagger at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in what? In faith, giving glory to God. 21 tells us, it says, and being fully persuaded, because Sheree, that's what faith is. When you look at the promise and you look at your situation, and your situation trying to persuade you that, 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 that nothing is going to change, but, but fully persuaded means you look at your situation and you look at the promise and you believe the promise. You believe the promise. We walk by faith, not by sight. You believe the promise. And you not only believe the promise, Brylon, but you are fully persuaded. You're 90 years old. You don't, not you, Brylon, you're not 90. But, but Abraham, 90 years old. 90 years old. But believe that God going to give him children. Woo! Woo! No money in your account, but you believe that God gonna pay those bills. Huh? 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 My God. Don't have a driver's license, but you believe that God gonna bless you with a vehicle. Huh? Then got denied by the finance company, but you believe that God's gonna bless you with a home. Huh? Anybody hear me up in here? Doctors done said this and that about your condition, but you believe that God is going to heal your body. You are fully persuaded. And I don't know about you, when somebody is fully persuaded, it means that nothing can change their mind. All right? That's where you need to be with God's promises. That's what believe in God mean. When Yahshua says, let not your heart be troubled. When he says, all this could happen. But listen, you believe in God, his existence, his promises, you're fully persuaded. And look, when bad things happen, guess what? You know what that faith person says? That optimistic person says? It don't, they don't say we're going to crash and burn and be electrocuted. No, they don't say that. No, God's going to make a way. Woo! God going to make a way. 
God going to provide? And even if they fall, guess what? They get back up. Huh? It's going to work next time. They get denied. Don't worry about that. We're going to dust ourselves off. Don't worry about that. Don't worry about it. We're going to go someplace else. We're going to go see Minister Duck. Don't worry about that. Don't worry about that. Because God promised. And I'm fully persuaded. And I don't care who done told me, what they done told me. I believe God and not man. Come on, give y'all some praise. Come on. I'm not done with it yet. This is going to bless you this week. Because trouble coming, but we're going to have to stand. All right? We believe in his existence, his promise. We believe in his power. We believe in his power. That nothing is impossible for our God. Like he told Sarah, is anything too hard for God? Like he tells us in Ephesians 3 and 20. That's what he says. And now unto him that is what? Able. To do what? Exceedingly abundantly. Above what? All. That we do what? Ask. Or what? Think. Woo! My God! Did you catch that? Did you catch that? He's able, y'all, to do exceedingly abundantly above all that you ask. Or even think. Or even think. Huh? You got to have faith. And believe not only in his existence, Cole, his promises, Cole, but his power. Anything you ask or need, God is able to get you that. He's able to get you that. And the negative people are there, but what if we did, Pastor? What if we did? We serve a God, though you were dead, he could make you alive. In the name of Yahshua Hamashiach. He is the resurrection and the life. You ask Lazarus about it. Anybody hear me up in here? He's able. 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 Anybody believe he's able? Shout if you believe he's able. I know you're going through, but he's able. I know it don't look good, but he's able. I know it don't sound good, but it's able. I know you done gave up, but he's able. You got to believe in his power, and that's going to guard your heart. No matter what happens, hallelujah, you trust and you believe in an omnipotent God. You see? We believe in God. We believe in his existence, his promise, his power, and we believe in his plan. We believe in his plan. That our God has a plan for us as a people, but for you as a person. He has a plan. He's an awesome God, y'all. He's an awesome God, y'all. And so when trouble happens in your life, one way, hallelujah, to just let that trouble shake off, huh? You remind the devil that God has a plan for you. You remind that situation that God has a plan. And that plan might not always feel good. It might not always look good or sound good. But according to my God's plan for your life, all things work together for the good of those that's called by God and called according to his purpose. And I'm telling you, it may hurt you. They're going to stab you in the back. They're going to leave you. They're going to reject you. Hey, God, they're not going to spend their money with you. They might not shop at your store. They might not utilize your services. They might go to this one and go to that one. But don't worry about that. God got a plan for your life. And his plan is to bless you. His plan is to favor you. His plan plan is to increase you. His plan is to heal you. His plan is to deliver you. His plan is to redeem you. God has a plan for your life. And we got to believe his plan. Jeremiah chapter 29 tells us about his plan. Don't you take these scriptures and just read over them. You better make that a part of your life. Jeremiah, he told, he, told, he said, for I know the thoughts, huh? Huh? In the other versions, what did it say? I know the plans I have for you, said the Lord. Plans of peace, that's shalom. That shalom means not only good health, prosperity, but it also means peace in your vicinity. 
It plans a peace. Peace in your finances, peace in all your relationships, peace in your body and in your health. That's God's plan for you. And not evil. And to give you an expected end. A future. A hope. A dream like life. That's God's plan for you. I might not come without some trouble. But the trouble not going to push the dream away. The trouble going to push you to the dream. Hey, God. It was Joseph's prison sentence that got him noticed by Pharaoh. The trouble don't push you further from God's plan for your life. The trouble pushes you towards it. You just got to keep reminding yourself that God has a plan for you. Come on, can you tell three people that God has a plan for me? Come on, come on, come on, come on. All right, all right, all right, I'm going to shock you right now. Come on, now tell five more people. Tell them this, tell them this, I'm on the God plan. Five more people, come on, come on. You might have to reach over, you might have to get up, you might have to tell somebody, but the devil don't want you to agree that you are on God's plan this morning because it's a plan that he got you on. And it's going to work out for your good. Hey, I'm on the God plan. 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 And it might not look good, but I'm on the God plan. Hey, I'm on the, ow, ow. I'm on the, I'm on the God plan. I'm on the God plan. And I'm right where I am. I'm right where I'm supposed to be. I'm going through what I'm supposed to go through. I'm doing what I got to do because I'm on the God plan. Hey, somebody shout unto God. Hallelujah. I'm on the God plan. I'm on the God plan. Go ahead and guard your heart this morning. Go ahead and shake the barnacles off. Go ahead and tell the devil that he's not going to slow you down any longer. Let not your heart be troubled this morning. Believe in God this morning. His existence, huh? His promises, huh? His power, huh? And his plan. You are right where you're supposed to be. Somebody give God a shout of praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ministers, I'm going to need y'all to come help me on this last point right here. Y'all, ministers of music, if y'all can, just come and help me. Come on, we right where we supposed to be. We right where we supposed to be. We right where we supposed to be. Come on, who you believing in this morning? Come on, who you believing in this morning? Who you trusting in this morning? Do you know? Do you agree? Do you trust in the almighty God? Yeah, you right where you're supposed to be. You're right where you're supposed to be. Daniel was in a lion's den and was right where he was supposed to be. The three Hebrew boys were in the fiery furnace and they were right where they supposed to be. Paul and Silas was locked up in the jail at midnight and they were right where they were supposed to be. Huh? Yahshua was on the cross. And he was right where he was supposed to be. The trouble, the crosses, those are the things that lead to crowns. They lead to resurrections. They lead to ascensions. It is the ashes that lead to the beauty. You see? But you just got to change your perspective. And you got to get back to believing in God. But that's not the only thing this morning. If we go back to our text, hallelujah, while the music ministers tell you, because I'm going to need the music to help this part of the word get into your heart. He says, let not your heart be troubled. He said, believe in God. But Yahshua tells our people, he says, don't just believe in God. 
He said, believe also in me. You see, that belief in God, his plan, his power, his, his, his existence, a God, his promises, that's what we call sustaining faith. And that faith is going to sustain you day by day. As you wake up and you get your portion of trouble, that's supposed to come to you every day. This belief in God is going to sustain you. It's sustaining faith. Is the rock in which we build on. But there's another faith that's going to even make you stronger than that. It's called saving faith. Anybody hear me up in here? And Yahshua says, you believe in God. He says, believe also in me. He said, you're going to need a saving faith. That's going to be the cherry on top. That's going to be the ice cream with your cake. That's going to be the chocolate syrup, huh? Huh? On your dessert. Come on, I'm getting hungry up in here. That's going to be your crust on your apple pie. Ooh! Hey, God, huh? My God, the graham cracker crust on your cheesecake. Hey! Because if you got sustaining faith and saving faith, you ain't going nowhere. You ain't going nowhere. You ain't going nowhere. You ain't going nowhere. Trials may come, but you ain't going nowhere. You ain't going nowhere. Trouble may come, but you ain't going nowhere. You ain't going nowhere. But you're going to need both to get through. See, some of y'all have either or. You got the saving faith, but you was having trouble with your sustaining faith, but we don't fix you. There's some here, you don't have the saving faith yet. And the same thing applies. For saving faith, you're going to have to know some things. You're going to have to agree with some things. And you're going to have to trust in some things. And once you know, agree, and trust in the things that I'm going to talk about, and you got that saving faith and that sustaining faith. Listen, the storms can come. The waves could beat against your life. The winds can blow. But you're going to be founded on the rock. And your house going to remain even after the troubles come. You see? You see? But pastor, what do I have to know? You have to know the gospel. You got to know some things. Know that you are a sinner. You are not perfect. But pastor, I went to Catholic schools. You are a sinner, Catholic school, parochial, private school, sinner. That's what you are. Because we've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Know that. Get that in your heart. Know it. Know it. Somebody say with me, I am not a perfect person. person. Alright? But you got to know some other things. And, 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 and Paul describes it in, in 1 Corinthians 15. I'm going to just pull it up while we, while we meditate and let this music just roll these scriptures through the through the pages of our heart Paul says moreover brethren I declare unto you the gospel which I preach unto you which also you have received wherein you stand pastor what do I have to know I have to know the gospel go to verse 2 Paul about to give it to us by which also you are saved, this gospel. If you know it, it can save you. If you keep it in memory, if you know it, don't let nothing take it away from you. You got to keep it in your mind and don't let nobody, no one, be fully persuaded of this thing, he says. You see, verse 3, what is it? What is it? What is it? He said, for I delivered unto you, first of all, which I received. What's the gospel? That Christ, that he died for our sins. Yes, we are all sinners, but he died as a substitute, as a payment 
for our sins. And it wasn't an accident, Tori. Listen, it was according to the scriptures. It was always his plan. Come on, give God some praise. So what do I need to know? I'm a sinner. Christ died for my sins. Keep going, Paul. What's the gospel? And that he was buried. He really died, y'all. He didn't pass out, Sergio. He didn't faint. He gave up the ghost on that cross. He said to Leo, it is finished, Anna. He died, and as a result of that, they buried him. They put him in that earth. That's the gospel. We're sinners. He died for our sins. He was buried in that ground. But the gospel doesn't finish there. He says he was buried and that he what? He rose again on the third day. Anybody hear me up in here? Huh? Yeah, they, they, they killed him at the cross. But he didn't stay dead. They buried him in the ground. But he didn't stay buried. He rose. He didn't wake up from a nap. He rose from the dead. Anybody hear me up in here? And that too was according to the scriptures. It was the plan of God that he would both die and be resurrected. On which day? The third day. What do I have to know? These are the facts that I have to know. If you don't know this, you can't believe. Verse 5. Huh? He not only rose from the grave... He was seen. Mm. He put his hand in his pocket and he walked around Jerusalem for a few days. <laughs> you hear me, Brother Rob? He was seen. Meaning that he didn't rise and, and one or two people say, I saw him. No, no, no. You could be crazy. No, no, no. He was seen of Cephas, then the 12. Mm. He was seen of 12 people, huh? Get Judas out of that. Matthias was in there. He was seen of 12 people. Look at verse 6. Not only 12 people, he walked around the city. He was seen of about 500 people at once, of whom a greater part, while Paul is writing Corinthians, Paul is saying a greater part of his 500 are still present and alive with us today. They saw him, Cole. With his hand in his pocket. He ain't had no pocket, but I'm just playing, you know. With his hand in his toga. <laughs> Walking around Jerusalem, over 500 saw him. Listen, Chris, if I'm in a court of law and a person come on the stand and say, I was at Winn-Dixie. I was at Super One. And we say, no, you was on that crime scene. You were stealing that generator. He say, no, I was at Super One. And he pull up, he pull up, Isaac, 500 people that was at Super One that day. And one after another, they get up there and they say, I swear, I saw him at Super One. 500 people get on the stand and say, I know he was there, but I swear I saw him walking around Jerusalem. <laughs> I swear I saw those nails go in. I swear, I swear to God, I saw him. I saw him. Some of them even ate with him. That's the gospel. We sinners. He died for our sins. He was buried. He rose the third day. He was seen of 500. Huh? He was seen of James in verse 7. And Paul say, in case y'all don't know, huh? In verse 8 he said, he was even seen of me. Remember when he, they knocked Paul off his horse? He said, like a person born out of season, huh? Last of all, he was seen to me. I declare to you the gospel that these things are what you have to know. You not only have to know them, but guess what? You got to agree with them. Because let me give you another secret. Knowing is half the battle. You know the devil knows these facts? The devil knows. And all of his demons know. You say, Pastor, how they know? They were there. They were there. Half the time running after he rode. <laughs> but they were there. So belief is not just knowledge. You got to agree. James 2 and 19. Y'all still up? We winding down. We winding down. I got to get this in your spirit. 
James 2.19, because James, he was seen of James. But look what James said. Go to 2.19. Thou believest that there is one God. Thou doest well. But guess what? The devils also believe. Your belief got to go deeper than just knowledge. You got to agree. Don't just know you're a sinner. Agree with God. Yes, I am a sinner. Don't just know like the college professor that he died for your sins, rose up. But agree. Yes, he did die for my sins. And last of all, here we go. Huh? You got to trust it. Huh? You got to trust it. Notitia, a sensus fiducia, knowledge, agreement, and trust. You got to trust it. And this is why the commentators say the devils fall short. They know it. They saw it. They agree that he got all power. They ran from it. But the devil don't trust Jesus as his savior. You have an opportunity this morning to trust him. To do the faithful. And say, God, I know I'm a sinner and I should be going to hell. But I'm going to fall back and let you catch me. I'm not going to rely on my daddy, my mama, my private schooling. I'm not going to rely on the fact that I, I never curse in public. I only steal in private. I only lie when I absolutely have to, Lord. White lies. I don't do the Negro line. I don't do black lies. I, I do white lies. You don't trust in any of that. You just trust that he died. He was buried. And he rose again. And you say, God, if you don't save me, I'm going to hit the ground. If you don't save me, I'm going to hit the ground. You the only parachute I got while I jump out this plane. You all I have. I'm putting all my weight on you. All my trust in you. And as I go through this life of trouble falling, I know that when you told me to ask and you'll save me, I know that when I pull this card, mm, your gospel parachute is going to catch me. And in my last days, I'm going to glide all the way down and set my feet on streets of gold. Amen. Not because I did it, but because I had a good parachute. <laughs> I trusted in the gospel. Come on and give God a shout of praise come on give him come on give him come on give him come on give him Woo! he says let not your heart be troubled you believe in God believe also in me we're gonna open up the gates and we're gonna have a little altar time and those that's watching amen we turn your living room your your kitchen amen your bedroom your hotel room Amen. The compartment of your truck, of your car, we turn that into an altar this morning. Amen. And if you've been having trouble, and those troubles have been getting to you, making you anxious, making you worried, weighing you down, giving you angst, huh? Uh, 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 um, just, just stressing you out, huh? We're going we gonna to give those troubles back to God this morning. And as we take those barnacles off of our heart, so we take those, those troubles, those problems. Next thing we're going to do, we're going to encase our heart with a trust of God, with a belief in God. So that we can go through life, man, unscathed, unharmed, unhurt, unhampered by these afflictions that we are assigned to, that we have a daily portion of. We're going to trust that he's never going to give us more than we can handle, y'all. All right? We're going to trust him. And this morning, something's going to happen to your life. This morning, that heart that's been battered and bruised, that's been hurt, that's been hampered, you swimming through life hindered, man. It's too many barnacles. Too many barnacles. The altar going to take the barnacles off. Some of y'all going to get your smile back. That's where that, that's good, that's good, that's good. Some of y'all gonna get y'all smiles back. 
Some of you going to get your hope back. Some of you going to get your, your love back. Some of you going to enjoy church like you've never enjoyed church in a long time. Some of you going to love your deacons again and love your ministers again and love your pastor again. And some of you going to love your wives like you should always been loving. Some of you, your marriage is going to get right because you're going to take the barnacles off. And you're going to put your faith right back in where it's supposed to be. We're going to believe in God this morning. Mm. We're going to believe in God this morning. Mm. Mm. Heaven is with us this morning. Heaven is with us this morning. Heaven is with us this morning. Hallelujah. Heaven is with us this morning. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you, heaven is, heaven is with us this morning. Hallelujah. We're taking the barnacles off. We're going to get sustained in faith at this altar. But we also going to accomplish saving faith at this altar. You know what you need to know. You're going to agree. And you're going to really trust in him this morning. I know you're black. I know we don't jump out of planes. But you're going to jump out of one in the spiritual this morning. Jump out of unbelief. Jump out of dead works. Jump into faith in Christ. In Yahshua. Listen, I can't hold y'all no more. The altar is, is prime. It's hot. It's, woo, it's anointed right now. Come to this altar this morning. Come and receive your medicine, hallelujah, for troubled hearts in troubled times. In troubled times. Hallelujah. Mm. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, your medicine. Your medicine. He's going to kill you. He's going to bless you. He's about to take the barnacles off. So you can multiply. So you can multiply. So you can multiply. So you can give birth. So you can swim from the chilly waters of Alaska to the warm, abundant, teeming life waters. My God, my God, my God. Mm. And after you take the barnacles off you, he's going to encase your heart with a belief in him that's going to protect you for the rest of your life. The rest of your life. No man, no woman, no child, no event, no situation is ever going to be able to harm your heart like it's been doing once you have your faith in the right place. So here we go. Here we go. Pray with me now. Say, Most High God, King of Kings, and Lord of Lords, I know that I am not perfect. I've made mistakes. And I am sorry. But I believe. I know. I agree. And I trust in you. You did die for my sins. You were buried in the grave. You did rise on the third day. You were seen by 500 people. This is real. And I know it. I agree with it, and I trust it. 
you are my parachute to catch me when I fall. I rely on you. If you don't save me, no one will. Please save me from all my sins. Please forgive me of all my sins. Please use me in spite of my sins. And Lord, take away the barnacles. I've been hurt. I've gone through trouble. But I am tired of the trouble. Trouble in me. Let not my heart be troubled. Any longer. Any longer. I, am I am encasing my heart with faith, with, faith. with, trust. with trust, with belief, with belief. In, you. in you. I believe in your existence. I believe in your, I believe in your word. I believe in your plan. I believe in your power. You have a plan for my life. And it might not feel good, good. but it will end good. good. I trust your plan for my life. And I will no longer be hurt hurt. by trials trials. and affliction. affliction. I know know. that it will all all work together together. for my good. good. Thank you, Lord. Lord. Praise you, Lord. Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Hey, somebody say in Jesus name, name. hallelujah, hallelujah. So listen, as you go through life, just trust God and trust Jesus. You're going to have a lot of people around you that love you, but that's where your faith lies. They'll never hurt you like that again. They'll never hurt you like that again. And you're going to be able to keep on moving. Keep on going. Yeah. Let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in Yahshua. Love y'all saints. See those of y'all in Dallas in Dallas. Shalom. May the Lord bless you. May he keep you. May he cause his face to shine upon you. May he be gracious unto you. May he lift up his countenance upon you and bless you with shalom. And bless you with shalom. Shalom, Israel. Shalom, Israel. In Jesus' name, shalom. Hallelujah.